Hey everybody, Liam here. I just want to give a heads up that there's a portion of the recording that may seem a little disconnected. Uh, we got a heads up that somebody who was participating wanted to have their section cut out um, and how it was intertwined with some other stuff going on. We did our best to cut out what they were talking about, um, but it may seem a little choppy and out of context towards the end of the call, but the rest of the material is great. So just want to give you a heads up that uh, if anything seems a little disjointed towards the end of the call, we just had to make some cuts here and there. All right, everybody, hope you have a great week and we'll see you on Monday. Well, welcome to this week's Monday meeting. Today is February 8th, 2021. Monday meetings are a chance for motion designers all over the world to connect and ask questions, share inspiration or hear presentations and interact with industry leading artists on an equal playing field. Your host today is Tori Kervik and she'll be leading us through a discussion about the implications of crypto art on the environment. Um, just kind of Q and A and what we all think about it and some articles that Corey has in hand. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna skip the rest of the intro because we all know it by now. So Corey, you wanna take charge and kind of lead us through this? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, thank you so much for letting me talk about this. Um, this is, I think, a bit of a hot button topic right now. I've seen a lot of conversations on Twitter about it, and I think that uh, Twitter is a bit of a challenging place to have a conversation because it gets kind of kind of heated kind of quick. Um, so I'm very curious to how people are feeling about this. Um, I do want to preface the conversation with a couple of things. I know that maybe people on this call or people listening to this call um, are selling their work on a crypto art marketplace. And I'm not really interested in condemning that or condemning crypto art in general. Um, I think that there is a lot of opportunity there. And uh, when it comes to the environmental impacts, I think that there are much worse bad actors um, that are contributing to climate change, like the, the richest of the rich and corporations are largely to blame. Um, and I don't think that responsibility should fall on the individual, but it is interesting to take a look at the system. Um, and I think it's worth discussing uh, because it's really starting to take off. Um, like just a few months ago, we had the Monday meeting call that was basically just like crypto art, what the, what the fuck is this? Um, and so uh, I do think it's exciting that it's taking off. And I think that digital artists should get paid for their labor. And I think it is exciting that uh, there is this opportunity to profit. Um, but I'm wondering if this is, if cr the crypto art marketplaces uh, as they stand are the best system for accomplishing that. Um, and so the main article that kind of caught my eye um, that really was like getting passed around on Twitter, I'm gonna drop it in the chat right now, um, is the unreasonable ecological cost of crypto art written by Memo Acton. So when I saw this uh, as someone who is passionate about this industry and is passionate about the climate crisis, I saw some of the numbers attached to uh, how much like uh, Ethernet tran or, uh, Ethereum transaction costs, which it's like one Ethereum transaction like basically uses the same amount of energy uh, as a US household in about a day. So it was just kind of alarming to me. Um, and so it did send me into a bit of a spiral seeing just the, the pure amount of energy that's used to uphold this system. So um, yeah, I kind of just want to see, did people see this article? Did you react to it? Uh, do you have any immediate thoughts um, about it is my first question. I, when I first saw it, I, I've read, I've, I shouldn't say I've read, I've like skimmed this article and then like the counter article to it as well. And the only thing that I wanna say about both of them is just, they've done a pretty good job, especially this one about citing sources. Um, but just like remember it is a medium article. So like do your due diligence too with reading this stuff, like follow the links 
to the sources that they're citing and you know read more than just the medium article that that's my only thought when i read this is like oh, i hope people aren't just like jumping the gun on this and like oh here's this big headline on this medium article um, but other than that i'm very interested in it because i already think about that from my own standpoint of when i'm rendering stuff like how much power i'm, I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis and then with the crypto art scene it definitely concerns me i think a lot of people are reading right now <laughs> it looks like they're all looking at the article. Yeah, it is a bit of a a read. I think initially it was like a 30 minute read and it got chopped down and there's like two other additional parts if you really want to dig in. Um, I'll link it again in the chat for anyone who might have missed it. But yeah, and it's, it's hard to know like how accurate these numbers are. Um, and so when I was reading this, like I, I generally don't have enough knowledge about all of these systems that are in place uh but it seemed alarming nonetheless and so then i was reading yeah the, the counter article um which was interesting because it was written by a managing director of a bank that i believe accepts cryptocurrency so it's just kind of hard to know like what what's accurate and what's true um i am interested in has anyone else read it or have thoughts or feelings I was looking at it and I think it's like my first impression is that I never would have thought that other than like the cost of running the computers and like stuff like that like I, I don't know I it seems crazy to me that it has that much of an impact um for something so digital but I guess it is just like all the the machines that have to run through the whole process of minting something and whatnot, but it's pretty surprising to me. I don't know, I just never would have thought that there was uh, potentially that big of an impact. But yeah, that's kind of my, my first impression with reading it. I mentioned this article to someone who works in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and their response was, do you have any idea how much more it takes to train a neural network or do any of these models that they build for basically all the technology that we're using and that's coming out now with AI, even the stuff that's just built into like After Effects for, you know, how they're improving Rotobrush and stuff like that. So I think that the article, there's like just this targeting of one thing without taking into consideration that everything we do with computers uses tons and tons of power. So why are we singling out this one thing that's not really, according to him, using any more than anything else? And I like your point in the chat, if you wanna chime in and make it aloud. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it, if it, it kind of matches that idea is like, there's so much that we don't actually pay for because especially because we're deferring costs to the future. So like the idea of, you know, you buy something that's plastic, you're paying for the materials and the process, but you're not paying for the cleanup of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I think that goes with a lot of things, including like energy, like we may be dealing, you know, like your own computer, you're paying your power bill, but you're probably not actually paying the market price for everything involved in creating that energy plus the heat dissipation that's affecting the environment. So like, I think sometimes it comes down to like, is, is lower hanging fruit um, when you're trying to get rid of these, uh, uh, these unpaid for costs is how valuable is it to the society, right? Like you could say that, you know, every one of our computers is kind of a terrible thing for the environment, right? Like the precious metals, like they're starting to mine in like Antarctica, you know, or whatever to get like the stuff to build chips. And, um, you know, you could say that like those chips that go into CAT scans machines, like that is maybe worth the value of the cost down the road, but is crypto art really like a sort of get rich quick scheme happening right now that is creating 
an unpaid for environmental impact. And so what is the ratio of usefulness and necessity? Because like all of us are making money probably in here from burning power, buying tons of equipment, being, you know, not as good environmentally as some other jobs, but it's part of the economy. It's how we make money. That's all. I think I would like to add something about, so I would like to say something about the environmental impact, which you just mentioned. Virtually our entire economy, like the entire economy of the world and the way the world is designed, is designed, it's not good for the world entirely. So singling out just crypto art or just the computer or just like maybe digging out things in somewhere, some part of the earth. I think the things they used to make chips it's uh, mined in Congo, where they have problems with using kids to mine those things, and it's crazy. I feel like if you really want to save the world, you have to redesign the entire world, redesign how humans live inside the world, redesign how all our technologies work. Because just changing, just stop, like just reducing or changing just the computer, how we use the computer is going to have much impact, or just changing how our electric our electricity source, let me put it that way, or where our power is coming from, wouldn't have much impact. We need to redesign the entire world to have like the biggest impact. We need to redesign the tools we use, redesign everything. I don't know if that makes any sense, <laughs> but that's what I think. I, I would say that that's totally, like we're in the same, I think we're in agreement. Like, uh, because I think like, whether they're doing it or not, and I know that they have a lot of bad practices like all technology companies, but um, I think Apple has a commitment to reaching 100% renewing of rare elements, I think, and, or and you know what, screw it. If a company does that, it's better than mining new, or, new elements, right? Um, and like labor force is a whole thing. Like I know that a lot of companies are guilty of that and Apple included and all that, but like, but then we have to agree that Apple is a business. No matter how much they say that they are going to commit to changing their environment, it doesn't change the fact that they're a business. And every time they design a new phone is supporting the consumerism mentality that we have in the world today. No matter how many times, like they are still designing a new phone. They still want you to buy a new phone. There's, they're still essentially creating waste. Like in the next two years, or. Seven, Apple makes your phone go obsolete in two years in the sense that they reduce your battery life, they reduce how functional your phone is. They want you to buy the new phone. That on its own is crazy. That on its own is like supporting the consumerism that the world is built on. So like a lot of all these corporate companies are just, are just businesses. They would rather make money than save the environment. That's what I think. For us to truly like change the world, we have to redesign how everyone in the world, how everyone in the world behaves, I guess. So how everyone act, how our systems and our technology operate. Because I feel like that's the way. And I feel like crypto art is like a really, really interesting thing with the fact that it's giving people, it's giving what people are with traditional art, the fact that it has been this for millions of dollars and it's putting digital artists in that same space that those traditional artists or those Renaissance artists have is amazing. And I think we should keep doing it <laughs> and maybe not worry about the environment too much for now. Because <laughs> this is going to sound cool, but the earth is going to die one day. I just pray it's not in our lifetime. So. Right. Um, Alejandro, I see you've got your hand up. Yeah. Um... Just to add a little bit to that is like, and, and I hate that this is gonna almost sound like I'm defending some of it, but it really isn't. Is in that it's easy to say companies sh should do this. Companies should find new ways to do things. You find new ways to do, you know, get to X without using X, Y, and Z. Problem is that it's not that easy. A lot of times that some of the materials that are used for this are use because it's really the only option because the physical properties of, of some special metal or some special compound, that's it. That's the only thing that gives you that. Um, and even when those things are recycled, um, the entire process of making a, a, a 
you know, a microchip. It's extremely dirty because even if you, even if every single material you have, you have all these other things of which cannot be recycled in the process, uh, and it's extremely dirty. So the the question is, what are we as as quote unquote the consumers willing to give up? Because guess what? Like you want the fastest computer, you want the fastest phone. Well, that's the price that, that that's been paid. I'm, and again, I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that it's it's more than just the companies deciding to do this. Because the reality is, is that if 90% of the companies decide that they're not going to do it that way, but then you have one company that decides, you know what, we're just going to do it that way no matter what. And our product is going to be three times faster than everybody else's. Guess what? A lot of people in this industry will go right to that company, regardless of anything else, because now it affects their bottom line. Um, so it's 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 very, it's a very complex problem, because it's not just changing the mindset of companies. It's, it's also what we expect of technology, and that's that's accelerating. I mean, more and more the things that we want, and the things that we depend on to work on, are extremely damaging to to the environment. And not just by themselves, just that it's, there's so many more of us now. And, you know, what it's, you know, a few million things are, is bad. Now multiply that and every time is more and more and more. I don't even know what the solution is to that. I mean, sure, reusing and, and minimizing is, is always the best, it's the best direction that we have right now. But this is a problem that we're stuck on for a long time. And it's unfortunately, I think, going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Right. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of um, <laughs> essentially you can find problems in anything and everything, uh, which I agree with. I think that the I'm a pro at that. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, in, in my free time, uh, I organize for a Green New Deal, which is basically going to call for like radically transforming uh, nearly every sector of like how we operate as um, a society and like trying to to address the climate crisis i think i'm going to bring it back to crypto art for a second uh because sarah i think you had a great point of like why signal uh why single this out uh and i think what's interesting about crypto art and like the the way that uh the energy used behind it is like leaving such an impact on me um, is because it just seems pretty exponential. Um, I think that like, as more and more people are starting to, to hop on, like the, the conversations of like, oh, crypto art, like you could make millions, uh, like jump on in, everybody's doing it. Um, I think it's potentially dangerous uh, because like each time there's a NFT that gets minted or people are minting editions of tens or hundreds um each transaction in each chain that is then added to the blockchain um is going to just continue to use energy and that's like i don't know just going to keep increasing and when it's already a significant amount of energy for each transaction the more and more people who hop on i don't know it's it's concerning does anyone else have like similar feelings to that? Yeah, because it's definitely like compounding on itself a little bit, you know, because all right, this week we had 10 people, those same 10 people are doing it. Plus now we have 10 people more and like more and more. And you're saying too, you know, when an artist mints a thousand copies of whatever, like, holy shit, you look at those numbers that it's like some of those are like as much as an airline uses in a year you know it's like that that's pretty ridiculous and seeing seeing even in just 2020 the impacts when everything shut down for a while of like how much cleaner the air became rapidly and like dolphins going back into what was it venice and it's like the venice canals and it's like that that took a couple months to get better. So how much damage are we doing in just a couple months? Like it, it, it really is kind of justified to be looking at it. It's um, something that I might ask, and maybe this is 
in the article. I only kind of skimmed it right now, but um, in bringing attention to it, is there a better way of doing things? Like, is there a solution or a way of improving what it's done? Or it's like the only way this exists is through this huge environmental aspect and or, uh, impact. And so if it, if there is no like alternative way, if, if like bringing light to this means there's no alternative way to doing it is the alternative to just not have it. Um, or really like what, what should be other than the environmental impact, what else should there be, should we be saying or bringing to light about, about this? Like what is the solution, potential solution, or is it just the way that things are? That'd be my next question, I guess. Totally. Um, from what I have found, um, and I know that there are people who are more knowledgeable of the proof of work versus proof of scope argument. Um, so right now, Ethereum is working off of proof of work, uh, which is using the amount of energy that is kind of laid out in that article. Um, but there's an argument that when Ethereum switches to a different system, the proof of scope system, it will radically reduce the amount of energy that is being used. Um, so that has been kind of like something that I feel like people are pointing to where it's like, yes, like proof of scope is gonna fix a lot of this. It's gonna use like significantly less energy. Um, but the article that they'll link to, and I will also link it in the chat right now, um, was written in January of 2019. Um, and it talks about the switch and how it would cut the energy consumption. Um, and in the article, it mentions that it hopes to accomplish the switch by the end of 2019. So something must have happened because uh, we are now in 2021. Um, and it looks like it's still a couple years away. Um, so I am also asking the same question as you, Andy, of like, how, how can we make that switch? Um, can there be accountability in that switch? Um, but as is, is that something that I'm kind of curious, like, does that potential to significantly reduce the amount of energy that's used for each transaction, uh, does that appeal to you? Is that promising for you to hop on now? Um, if you are someone who is like interested in getting into this crypto art game. Yeah, I think it's, it would, I don't know right now how much the environmental impact is uh, going to stop people from jumping on the hype train of crypto art right now, but I think it's would definitely be something to like, if people are already interested in it, um, pushing forward, pushing for a you know, less energy consumption or less environmental impact is still good and possible. So that's why I wanted to bring up, like, rather than just saying, look how bad it is, say, okay, is there a solution we could be pushing for? Um, because I think that that is, I don't know how much saying, uh, just look how bad it is, is going to stop many people, but maybe pushing them towards, hey, look how bad it is. And here's a solution we could push for push forward to so people can still you know do the crypto art and whatnot but have less of an environmental impact i think that's a bit more of a more potentially power stronger like message or whatnot more might cause more change um or shift people's thinking a little bit because i think if the only message is look how bad this is don't do it um not like that is the message but if that's if there is no other solution being talked about, then um, I think a lot of people just kind of go, well, that sucks, but I'm going to keep doing it. So that's just kind of why I brought that whole point up. Totally. Yeah. Is there anyone here who does sell their work on a crypto art marketplace? Mark does. Mark, how do you feel about everything? If you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Uh, I, well, I haven't sold anything, so. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air on it. And I mean, 
there's so many things to tackle. Like I think all the points that have been brought up today already with just like what we do with our computers and just rendering in general and just, you know, we're definitely not on a uh, sustainable path per se in terms of energy consumption and in the work we do. Um, You know, I have a new computer that sucks like a thousand watts, you know, or more than that. And it's just like constantly churning. Um, Watts, I think, yeah. Um, But I think, and and maybe you touched on this earlier too, what is going to help offset it is just the, the beginnings of solar energy, wind energy, stuff like that. Um, you know, theoretically, you know, some place that gets a ton of sun, you know, they might even be able to run one of those whole warehouses by just mining solar, you know, um, I know that's a ways away, but it is there. And I mean, I think you guys touched on it earlier too, just like the neural network and training AI. And like, I mean, some of this stuff is just a blip on the radar compared to how much power consumption is being used by like all these other things. And I mean, I guess the biggest thing here is just like the NFT thing is for say like, personal consumption like it's kind of selfish it's buying artwork using all this energy to buy something using all this energy to trade cryptocurrencies and and things like that um so yeah i don't know i think it it takes on a little bit different of a role because it is just um it's not necessarily making the world a better place like an AI or neural network or something like that per se. Um, But yeah, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to, to watch this closely. And I think we do see kind of a boom of of it right now. And a year from now, who knows where this might be. Um, But yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about it, honestly. <laughs> that was my long-winded answer. Um, just say that. But yeah, I don't know. Right. Yeah, I can totally relate to um, those mixed feelings as well. Because uh, I, you know, it's a it's a lot of information, and I think even just like a few months ago, like us trying to to wrap our head around how it all even works in the first place. Um, it is, it does take like a little bit to dig into it. Yeah. I mean, and what you all have alluded to before too, in terms of like the precious metals and this, that, and the other, like, if you think about like this huge push to go to electric vehicles, like awesome. Right. But all of the emissions, everything to make that happen, like who knows how that really nets out. Right. Like the carbon footprint of it all to like create these batteries and create all these mines to like get minerals and like, like the vision is good, but the, the uh, kind of the path to get there is just as kind of dangerous or in a way, like you, you see those, those photos of how they mine the minerals for batteries. It, It looks like a toxic waste dump, you know? And, it, and that's essentially getting us, future-proofing us, but we're kind of having to take some hits before getting there. I mean, I also speak not knowing much about it. So, I mean, just from my general like observation of it, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like a clean, a clean path per se, but sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm ranting. No, totally. Um, I appreciate that insight. I guess another question that I kind of was thinking about, um, and there are some good things happening in the chat here too. Um, if anyone wants to to voice those, let me know. Let me catch up here. I was just gonna chime in, like on the some silver lining on it, is that for something so new, it's it it's promising that there's a lot of conversation on how to improve it for 
the better already. Like if you look at the environmental impact of coal mining over the course of humanity, it's like only 250, 300 years later. No, I guess not that long, but still it's like hundreds of years later that we're finally like, we're still struggling to get off that system. Um, so it, there seems to be like some sort of exponential promise to like, you know, month three of this, we're already dealing with like, how do we improve this? So we can have the, you know, have our cake and eat it too, as far as like helping the environment and also helping artists be empowered with what Renaissance artists were able to do or whatever. Yeah, I do. I, I like that there is that silver lining um, and kind of a promise of like a, a better way to run things in the future. Um, but I think when I like think about the climate crisis and like how pressing it is, are those like promises of like, oh yeah, it could be run cleaner and better in the future. Um, I, like, is, is that enough? <laughs> That's kind of what I think about. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a good point because it's, and I think it's it's. Uh, I think Sarah brought it up earlier. It's uh, it made me think like, what? How does this compare to all these other things? Like, it would be nice to have like a one to one um, comparison of like all these other industries or things that we are doing that have huge implications beyond what we are experiencing from our computer screens. Um, to really figure out, like, there's so many problems that we have to definitely address with the the pressing climate issue, and um, I think it's it's so challenging that there's there because everything we do impacts it negatively. It seems um, it's like, do we want to get our pitchforks out about something that ultimately might be the smallest? contributor to that um, when I think it's already going to be like in my opinion the importance of the Green New Deal is already going to be a huge thing to get like the the general zeitgeist to like buy into but that's like it's so needed um, and I think that there's there's so many th there's so many like issues in today's day and age where the people that uh, would be would rather us not change anything for the better have that go-to built-in excuse of like, oh, we got so much to worry about. Why are we worrying about this now too? Um, so just just getting an idea of like where that where it fits on the spectrum of contributions to environmental destruction is, I think would be really helpful. And it's probably in this article that I didn't read. So. Yeah, I think I did see something that was like, it's like, one percent of the problem or like 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 it, it, it is very significant or insignificant um like when you look at the grand scheme of things and like how much we collectively the world is contributing to climate change so it is like it it is kind of an interesting like point to be like okay well why are we like fixating on this um and i think it is like it's important to like recognize i guess um the role that you could play in contributing like just just in general um and so i think it's interesting when it comes to like our industry and how we make money and like uh then like how you compare uh what you're doing to then how you may potentially like be profiting off of this there, there it's a very complex issue <laughs> and so i guess i'm kind of like also wondering um something that i had thought about is i know many people will like kind of morally assess their clients and like I've heard some people say like oh I would I would never take on um like a, a cig cigarette company or a lotto company I would never do work for something like that um so one thing that I'm curious at, of is and I'm not sure if anyone here would have this experience when someone does buy your work on one of these websites do you know who that person is like do you get is it like a username or is it a profile um would accepting that person's money uh, by like them buying your work, like does that kind of compare to how you would also assess like working for a client? Um, interested in people's thoughts on this 
or like does this system also kind of play into to your decision of like if I do want to make money like I want it to be this way or not this way so you're saying like who if yeah sorry, somebody if somebody politically that we don't agree with wants to buy our art does do we turn them down is that what I'm getting Maybe not turn them down, but I, I think that's, sorry, it's kind of a two part question. Um, okay. I am curious, like, do you even know who is buying your work? Um, and does, is that like a decision that then you would take into account uh, if you are going to like start selling your work on a crypto marketplace is like having control over how you are accepting money? Yeah, I think you do know because Beeple was showing some screenshots the other day of somebody who had offered him something for a piece and you could go look up their wallet. I don't know if you know their exact name or not, but you could at least like follow their transactions and look up their wallet and see like, oh, wow, they really do have like $2.5 million in their account or something ridiculous like that. Um, but I don't know if it goes so far as to knowing like on a personal level, kind of like a website where like, you can omit certain details, but like there's still an IP address that gets tracked, you know? Um, I don't know, Mark, do you know anything more about that for like when people wanna buy? Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, obviously things with the blockchain is you can look up every single transaction, who the, you know, who owns that wallet. Uh, it's not gonna say Liam Clisham, but it might say, um, either like some sort of username or like generated user ID or something like that. Um, but so yeah, you can track it. Um, but yeah, Tori, I, I think you bring up a good point. There's really no way to, to tell unless they explicitly say it that like, you know, um, this person who bought your work uh, works for Monsanto or something, you know, like there's, you might be able to dig and figure out who owns and like reverse engineer all that info, but there's no real like direct correlation between the two. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's something to be mindful of too. And I think right now kind of where a lot of things are, it's still very early in this crypto art game. And I see, um, Tokyo is on too, and he sold some pieces. So he might be able to um, talk a little bit about this as well. But I think it's so new that a lot of people are starting to try to figure it out and just kind of experiment in the space. Um, and I think, I don't know, but I think there's a lot of people that um, are throwing some work up, hoping to get you know someone to buy it. Um, but there's, I don't really know how much like calculated marketing or anything has been going into it other than like certain people that are like a Beeple or a, there's another guy named Pack or P-A-K, whatever. Um, but yeah, so um, interesting there. And like, we can hit another uh, little side topic on this, you know, maybe after we we finish up with this, this note, but, um, one thing to consider is some people are starting to take like, um, like famous artwork, digitize it, split it up into NFTs, and then you can buy a slice of the Michelangelo or whatever it is. And it's not their work. It's just a photo or I, it's super shady and kind of whack, <laughs> very whack, I guess. Um, so like, you know, it, that, that I guess tells me is people are just in it for a money grab right now. Certain people, certain people are in it because they're like starting their art collection or digital art collection or digital works up on a marketplace. But then you have people with big names going out, ripping some famous artwork, slicing it up, selling those off. I mean, it's super shady and it just really makes me feel like it's a lot of a money grab financially right now. Um, so until that kind of like chills out, I, I don't know how, what the longevity of this may be, you know? Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Totally. Um, Chris, yeah, you did you did jump in. I am interested in hearing in hearing your thoughts on this um, because I do know that you are someone who who cares about the climate crisis. We've had conversations about that in the past, um, and you are selling work on a crypto art marketplace. So, very interested in hearing your your thoughts. Totally, yeah, um, and uh, and yeah, no, I think I think it's it's a really interesting space, and I have very mixed feelings about different parts of it. Like I'm really not into some of the like, uh, you know, especially like that the project from PAC I think is incredibly lame. Um, and I I really don't like the whole idea of like, uh, of like making stuff specifically kind of tailored towards like the sort of NFT space. And like, you know, a lot of the work that we're seeing that's like, you know, Elon Musk, like shitting Bitcoins, like, and, you know, things like that. Um, but, uh, but then also like, you know, the stuff, you know, coming out from, you know, people being kind of more um, aware of sort of the energy usage of the blockchain and stuff, you know, to see people comment on that, like, people like pack and then go out and like print or like mint editions of, you know, 100 pieces of things and like split up Michelangelo's, you know, thing and do a bunch of pieces that are all going to get bids and all going to use blockchain transactions and all that stuff is like, you know, pretty, pretty ignorant to just like not really being mindful of sort of the amount of energy and stuff that's being used. Whereas I feel like if you are, you know, someone who is just trying to see if they can sell some kind of one of ones of their art and stuff, you know, on super rare or something like that, which is a site where you can only do one of ones, um, that is, you know, much more conservative in terms of like the energy usage than going out and saying, I'm going to, you know, mint these editions of 100 like random little like cube things that people can collect and like whatever. And I mean, I, I kind of get the idea of it being like a collectible thing and kind of all that stuff, but I'm personally much more interested in the idea of like people are collecting individual editions of people's art that they actually made themselves and, you know, show that they kind of like appreciate these specific artists or whatever. And it can be sort of like an alternative to getting income from, you know, working on commercial gigs or working on, uh, you know, or having like a Patreon or like doing things like that. Um, and it's interesting. And it's also interesting, like thinking about like these collectors and who they are and like, you know, some of them may be kind of questionable people and, you know, have gotten all their money from, you know, selling drugs on the deep web, or some of them may have, you know, uh, uh, or some of them may be like actual mindful collectors who are like, you know, picking out pieces from artists that you like, who you want to, um, you know, have uh, your stuff kind of be like in their collection for that reason. Um, but yeah, I think in general with the energy consumption stuff, uh, it's good for everyone to be mindful of it. And it's important for people to all kind of individually make decisions of like, you know, how am I going to deal with this? Am I going to start minting less? You know, am I going to start eating less meat? Am I going to go vegetarian? Am I going to completely quit selling, you know, and minting and bidding on, you know, uh, NFT stuff? Um, it's all like important stuff to be keeping in mind. Um, but I also, at the same time, uh, feel like, you know, the most important thing to be doing with regards to climate change and all this stuff is to figure out how we can sort of address the systemic problem and kind of create like, you know, political change and kind of, uh, you know, uh, influence both like the government as well as like these sites that are maybe, you know, not as efficient as they could be or the people who are actually working on the blockchain and things like that. And, you know, it all kind of needs to happen from, you know, from the ground up, starting with kind of like the people who maybe aren't even involved in the space who are commenting on it 
and then the people who are contributing to it and are on like a lower level and then the people who are higher up obviously have like the most power to sort of influence these marketplaces and stuff um i know also you know from that kind of initial article that came out uh the medium post that everyone uh saw um that they were commenting a lot on like people's stuff and on nifty gateway um and maybe this has already been discussed but like an interesting thing about nifty gateway as opposed to maker's place or super rare you know uh is that um they have their whole own like internal system for dealing with you know trading sort of like the ownership of stuff and they're not writing everything to the blockchain they're just minting the initial piece and so that's the only thing that uses up all this sort of blockchain energy and then the rest of it is kind of done with their internal you know custodial system um and that's a really smart way to be sort of addressing this from you know the perspective of like one of these marketplaces um and it requires you know a bunch of uh a bunch of resources to be able to do that. And it's only really possible, I think, for them because, you know, that site is owned by the Winklevoss twins who, you know, also own Gemini, which is like a whole, you know, cryptocurrency exchange. And they can kind of, you know, leverage that to have a system underlying that does all that stuff. But it also, you know, uh, it also means that like, you know, Beeple stuff, for example, is not like, you know, actually eating up uh, you know, all this energy for every single bid that's happening on every single one of his pieces or whatever. It is still a lot of energy and it still is, you know, a lot of like minting that they're doing on the blockchain. Um, but, you know, it's at least good, I guess, that they are figuring out kind of some ways around, uh, around all of that. Um, so that's a good thing to be aware of. And it would be good to see like, if some of these other sites could kind of push for that. It's also, you know, worth noting of course that you know ethereum 2.0 is coming and it's not here yet and it's definitely very important to be mindful of the stuff before we get ethereum 2.0 but you know there will be a day in the future in theory where you if you have an idea for like a large addition of something that you want to mint you know you can kind of save that for then um so yeah that was sort of just like a whole ramble of different thoughts and stuff um but uh, that's sort of how I feel is that like, we should all as individuals be making the decision of like how much we want to be kind of conserving our usage of blockchain energy. And we should also all be thinking about, you know, how do we address the core issue? Um, and, uh, you know, some people have also talked about things like buying like carbon offsets, um, which is an interesting idea. Uh, I think in the research that I've done, I'm like, I've become a little bit skeptical of that. I feel like carbon offsets are kind of like a way for corporations to sort of like, you know, throw a couple of, you know, million dollars at this, you know, like uh, at this much bigger problem um, and like feel like they, you know, dealt with all of their sort of environmental impact. When in reality, a lot of the time, these carbon offsets are like uh, not going to make the investment that they made or the, you know, the costs of the like pollution that they contributed um, carbon neutral for like a long, long time. And it's maybe even going to be positive for a long time until like, you know, all the trees that they planted end up offsetting the, uh, the carbon that they kind of emitted. Um, so I feel like, you know, if you're someone who's thinking, oh, I'll just donate to carbon offsets to sort of deal with the, you know, contribution that my NFTs have created or that my, you know, whatever has created, um, that it's good to think about like, you know, where that money's actually going and how much of a difference is actually ma making and, you know, what is sort of the best use of your dollar when it comes to like using that to kind of advocate for climate change policy. Um, and I feel like, donating to something like the sunrise movement and like you know creating an actual sort of like political change is going to maybe be a better investment um you know i'm not i'm not totally sure it's all like important stuff to be researching and you know being aware of but uh it's sort of another idea that people have talked about with regards to all of this stuff totally thank you so much for that um what i'm gathering is like 
I feel like just kind of demanding accountability, like yes, for like addressing the climate crisis in general, um, contact your representatives, demand a Green New Deal, uh, but also like demanding accountability from maybe these sites or uh, like the Ethereum uh, network. Uh, do you know if there's like any way to, I know that like Ethereum 2.0 looks promising. Um, and I had kind of talked about uh, one of the articles that talked about the switch and how at the beginning of 2019, it was hoping that it was going to be accomplished. The switch was going to happen by the end of 2019. Um, there was a holdup. Do you know, like, maybe why there was a holdup um, and like how we could push for uh, getting that switch to happen sooner? And also another question I'm thinking of is like, do these websites uh, like Nifty Gateway or Super Rare or uh, what have you, like, do they choose, would they be able to choose, like, we want to use Ethereum 2.0 um, and, like, uh, be able to kind of, like, demand that switch a little bit more? Do you have any yeah. thoughts on those? I, I think that uh, you're making a good point about they said that the switch would be done in 2019 because, like, I remember hearing about the switch in, like, 2017 and thinking that it would be soon and it's like still on the way and like so who really knows how long it's going to take for that to happen um there are also other blockchains besides the ethereum blockchain that are way more energy efficient um so it's uh it's it, it would be interesting to see if like some of these sites would kind of like maybe look into potentially using some of that or maybe doing some of their transactions on that somehow. I don't really totally understand the technical stuff well enough to be able to, you know, say what or what would or wouldn't work. I know like the fact that Ethereum is so ubiquitous is why they're able to sort of do this on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's sort of like the thing that makes it the standard everyone's agreed upon that NFTs are gonna be on the Ethereum blockchain. And that's what kind of gives everyone the trust of like the value of NFTs. Um, but uh, yeah, when will it actually switch to ETH 2.0? Hopefully soon, but it seems like it keeps getting pushed back a year, like constantly. Um, so who's to say? Um, you know, if it seems like that's going to be happening forever, it might make sense to say, hey, could we push this onto like an NFT specific, you know, energy efficient blockchain. But then also outside of all that stuff, it's worth pointing out that like, you know, Bitcoin is by far the blockchain that contributes the most to this issue by like a wide margin. Um, and, you know, out of all of that stuff too, like, you know, like Bitcoin is definitely making a significant impact on the environment in terms of the energy usage, but it is like a minuscule impact when you compare it to like how much eating beef contributes to the environment. So, you know, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people are really aware of and, you know, some other people may be less aware of, but um, I think it's, it's really kind of important to be looking at the whole picture in terms of like, you know, how much am I contributing to, you know, uh, to carbon emissions by, you know, making ads for Pepsi or by, you know, um, you know, doing like driving in LA or, you know, doing kind of like whatever. Um, it's all like important stuff to be considering, getting things shipped to my house, getting, you know, I, I think I read somewhere that like the total energy contribution of all NFT transactions thus far amounts to like a third of a day's worth of like gene production worldwide um, or like uh, like a tenth of like McDonald's hamburger business emission in a day, um, which is, you know, makes it seem really small. Like all of this stuff is really important and worth kind of like keeping in mind, but it just goes to, you know, point us more towards the fact that this is like a really big systemic issue and we need to figure out some kind of fundamental way to address this issue that makes all of these corporations responsible uh, and, you know, all these individuals like, you know, do whatever they can to, you know, become more sustainable. Um, yeah, I don't know, that was a bit of a rambling, end, but uh, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, maybe there's someone here who can talk more about like the Ethereum 2.0 and if they have a understanding of when that's actually going to happen or, you know, how other blockchains could potentially be used. But I do think that, you know, the blockchain is 
a, a good technology for us to be developing and creating. It just needs to be way more efficient. And the people who are, you know, creating them need to be held accountable for, you know, creating these more efficient blockchains somehow. And there seems to be a lot of issues regardless of, you know, even if we do switch to Ethereum 2.0, like, you know, is proof of work really better than, or is proof of stake really better than proof of work if we're like then, you know, just like giving more money to the people who own the largest stake of Ethereum who, you know, don't really need any more uh, of that chunk of change. Um, I don't know, it's complicated. Totally. Um, I will link something in the chat. Uh, I was digging into a little bit of like what it would look like to switch to ETH 2.0. Um, and one of the questions like on the website was like, how can I contribute to ETH 2? And it says the most active role you can play is to stake your ETH. So I think they're then looking for um, like whoever is already like currently involved with developing and maintaining Ethereum. Um, and it looks like it's going to kind of depend on them to like push for the switch and it looks like the rollout is still like a couple years away. Um, so I think it does kind of tie in with like everything else, like, yes, like driving a car, eating meat, um, like it is all kind of harmful, but like, I think those, it's harmful because like there are these systems that are in place that have like enabled it to grow to this huge problem. And I think like, because this is a system that is like starting out and we potentially have some control over it, I think we have like room to demand for accountability and um, to demand for like a more sustainable way for uh, digital artists to, to profit off of their work. So, yeah. Corey, do you wanna, say anything else before we get going or like where people can find you or talk to you about more of this? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, if anyone has like more insight on this topic, uh, it's something that I'm very interested in and uh, want to continue uh, trying to find a better way because I think that digital artists deserve a platform to, you know, get paid for their labor, uh, but also in a way that is less harmful. Um, but thank you so much for everyone who came and listened and shared thoughts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for taking over today, Tori. That's great. Um, as always, if you want to find us anywhere, just do a quick search on Google or whatever social platform for Monday meeting, and this will be posted at some point in the next week. Sometime hey, also, today, uh, before we get out of here, Liam, uh, I, we celebrated kind of like a milestone, huh? Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess also like a big thank you to everybody too. We broke 10,000 listeners or listens last week, um, which is huge. And I feel like that jumped up pretty rapidly in the past year because I remember when we were at like 3,500, mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing. So like all of a sudden we had a pretty big jump. So that's great. Um, so thanks everybody who's been a part of these and contributed and come and gone and all of that. Um, let's just keep it going. It seems to be fun and working. I guess another thing too, um, let me just bring up the date really quick. In two weeks, um, Matthias is gonna come on and talk about Anchor Point and using that for project management. So it's kind of gonna be a demonstration at first and then maybe we can do some Q and A and talk about just general file structures and things like that. I think it was Lucas had brought it up in Slack the other day and the timing just worked out. Um, I've been messing around with Anchor Point for about a week now, I guess. And um, it's awesome. It's like visualized artist-friendly Git and it, it's gonna be pretty great, I think. So be excited for that as well. Sweet. Uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, Liam, for teasering. Looking forward. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll try and put together some more teasers for it over the next week too and get it pumped up. All right, everybody. Well, have a great week. And uh, oh man, I'm, I missed meme of the week. Uh, oh yeah, lucky you, you you missed it. I mean, do you want? I I oh, my, you're I doing made, it anyway. I made my own. Uh, the 2020 hours is like, what's a Bitcoin? Uh, um, oh no, money. Ah, Bitcoin. <laughs> I like this for its absurdity. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I got some work to do, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Hop over to the daily call. If you're on the daily call, I'll be there. But have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Tori, for hosting. That was awesome.
Yeah, it was great. I, I want to follow up with it for sure. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. See ya.